Oh. Come on, JP, where's your energy? You'll have to jump higher than that. Sam, I'm just not sure I'm cut out to be a keeper. Everyone else is getting so much stronger, but I feel like I'm just staying the same. Now, none of that, JP. You're Ryman's guardian shield. Look, I'll be leaving school before too long, and then you'll be the only thing standing between the ball and the goal. But... No buts. You still have time. You don't have to be perfect right now. It'll come. You know I've got your back while I'm still here, eh? Merci, Sam. We have your back too, JP. Arian. Huh? It's been a while. Uh, by long, what are you doing here? Chapter 6 To Three Kingdoms Come Bai Long Is there something different about you or am I imagining it? Different? Do you think? A lot has happened since I last saw you all. I guess it must be something big for you to end up here. The football ban, all these strange things happening, everything you're fighting. I'm not going to keep quiet while they insult football like this. Does that mean you've come to help us? I have a debt to repay you after all. You're really joining us? Hmm, I see. This is all very convenient. Are we sure we can trust him? True, he might stab us in the back at any time. Think about what you're saying. This is Bylong we're talking about. I'll vouch for him. You would? Well, anyway, it's great to see him again. Oh, Faye, you don't know Bylong, do you? He might not say much, but he's okay. I know. You do? I knew that if I was going to travel through time, I'd need to do my homework. I need to know who to watch out for. Bailong's not dangerous. I get that, but it's always possible that El Dorado might try to use skilled players for their own ends. Yeah, that makes sense. It's a pleasure to meet you, Bailong. Likewise. From now on, Bailong is one of us. The rest of you don't mind, do you? You're the captain. Well, I certainly don't mind you adding my... Favourite character onto the team? Ah, you found a new friend. Good, let's continue. So where to next, Mr. Evans? Hmm, yes. I'd say we're off to the Three Kingdoms. The Three Kingdoms? You mean from the romance of the Three Kingdoms? The Chinese historical legend? The third player is a supremely accurate midfielder who uses prophetic vision to strike at the enemy's heart. Chu Liang, of course. And the fourth is an iron wall goalkeeper with the power and toughness to subdue an empire. Who other than Liu Bei? Are you serious? Liu Bei is the greatest. Um, Liu Hu? Are you telling me you haven't read the Romance of the Three Kingdoms? What kind of Philistine are you? Okay, so about 1800 years ago, China was split into three kingdoms called Wei, Shu and Wu. The story is about how they were created. Liu Bei was one of the heroes of that era. He was a real person as well, and with his generals Guan Yu and Zhang Fei, he fought the huge armies of the tyrant Cao Cao. And as it happens, Zhuge Liang was the tactician who worked for Liu Bei. So this Liu Bei, what kind of person was he? He was a real man of honour, and he always did his duty. He was so popular that when Cao Cao's army forced him to retreat from a city he held, all the citizens followed him. 
there were a hundred thousand people, so they were pretty slow, but Liu Bei took them all with him, even when his men told him to leave them. Wow. Oh, uh, well, what kind of artifact can we get for that? Hmm, eighteen hundred years ago. Is there even anything left from that time? Uh, obviously. Maybe. There is one thing quite famous among fans. They say that Magic Moves has a scroll written by Chuga the Yang himself. Uh, allegedly. Magic Moves? You mean Magic Moves in town? Where Wang Li's granddad works and he's never mentioned this? Might as well have a look if it's the only thing we've got to go on. Still don't know more why my granddad hadn't told me about this though. Liu Bei, a legendary goalie. You'll be mixing maxing with them, JP. It's up to you. Sam, I appreciate it, but do you really think I'm good enough? I told you, didn't I? You're Ryman's guardian shield. I know you can do this. Okay. But never mind Liu Bei, never mind Sugar Liang, never mind JP. Let's focus on Bai Long joining the team. I already hinted in the last game that he might be my favourite character in the Inazuma 11 Go series, and with an inner link entry like Bai Long reporting for duty, will that suffice? Yes, I think it's clear to say and admit that Bai Long is my favourite character in the Inazuma 11 Go series. Jordan Greenway is my favourite from the original trilogy, and then Bai Long is my favourite from the second trilogy. Don't ask me to pick between them, but it's definitely Chrono Stones itself that makes me really, really like Bai Long. Like, trust me, I've already been bigging up the inner link for how hilarious and enjoyable to read it is, but it just gets tenfold better now that Bai Long is in it. Everything he says his, is gold, and everything he says is exclusive to Inazuma 11 Go Chrono Stones. Thunder Flash, because if you're playing Wildfire right now, Bylong does not join your team at this point. It's quite interesting getting into the version differences because we are 32 episodes into this Let's Play now, and for the first 31 of those episodes, the games were exactly identical leading up to now. There wasn't a single version difference apart from maybe a bit of pal packing. And, and that was it. But now we get a huge difference which is going to impact every waking moment of the game from now on. And so we better add him to our team as we go... Uh, going to move him in via friends first. That unfortunately means someone has to go and well given that Kaiser doesn't trust him, yeah you're definitely going. I will only accept trust of my favourite character, thank you very much. Bylong joins the main squad. Let's make sure he's in my formation as well, because we're going to go back into Steve's competition route to have a proper look at what he can do. Uh, yep, yeah, let's, let's go with that, keep Gabby up where he is, because he's still got new stuff to show off as well, especially Le Flamme, which hasn't come into play yet. It's a little bit unfortunate with the timing of going to Steve's competition route because we just unlocked the starter ticket 2 in the last episode which unlocks a battle with the football bots but we're not exactly desperate to see them again. If I were to go into the goalie spirits and I want to try and finish this route in this episode and claim the rewards but my team is already level 26 and the next story required team are level 27. So it's almost inevitable that I'm going to get a bit over leveled here, but I'm just going to finish this one route and try to keep a cap on it. I will show most of this match for the sake of showing off Bylong and talking about version differences. The the match after that, maybe not. What level is Bylong? That's something I forgot to check. Well, he seems to be about on par with these guys, which probably isn't a good thing. Let's just skip Killer Whale. I'm more than welcome to just skip animations in competition route matches, keep things going at a normal pace. Uh, Mixy Max! That's it! We can do it right now if Gabby's going for an opponent. Mixy Max with Joan, good to see this, which we didn't see a whole lot of in the previous two episodes. He was just out of stamina immediately. 
Let's have a look at Le Flamme, 45 TP. Lovely. So, of course, it had to fail, didn't it? Just, uh, just really making it work for us. Oh, well, I want to shoot with Bylong, but I guess I don't get to. He'll get his chance on the next one. He does already have a fighting spirit that we could bring out, but I don't know if we just want to do that straight away. I want to get at least a regular goal with him first, right? It might be a little hard, but for now, Astro Break, only just enough to beat a regular catch. What on earth? But anyway, that's off topic. We need to be talking about Bylong, who joins your team for chapter... Are we on chapter 5 or 6? It was at the start of this episode, but I've already forgotten. It's kind of hard to measure progress in this game, because it has such a slow but fun start. Come on, get moving up, mate. And then, you know, once you go into Nobunaga's era, that's where it feels like the game truly begins, even though you're, like, over a third of the way through it in actuality. But, you know, I still love the game for what it is. Bylong does not have a dribbling move, so you're going to need to outrun all these guys and show us a Dragon Diver, which is a 60 TP move and very, very strong. And it's a shot chain as well, so we're going to see a ton of of this move once we get things started with long shots like Flying Fish and Do Re Mi. That move is almost certainly going to be getting involved all the time because I'm going to be putting Bai Long in every match. I love the guy and this is a let's play of Thunder Flash, not Wildfire. So I've got to at least show off my exclusive as we now bring out his fighting spirit for a duel apparently. He can't armify but White Wyvern is still one of the strongest fighting spirits in the game. And if for any reason you can get hold of Tezcat for your team in the post-game, but he's very hard to get, obviously, then he would even be able to spirit bond and use King Arthur as a spirit instead, which is insanely strong. It's just as good as Griffin. But now let's attack Neptune. Oh, look at that white white. Oh, okay. I mean, we lost the duel, but it was kind of worth it to deal that much damage without any consequence to myself. But yes, yeah, so I've put it off long enough. What do you get in part 32 of the Let's Play if this is the alternate timeline where I was playing Wildfire instead? Well, you would get the Striker for Inazuma 11 Go's second to last boss battle, Universal Junior High, and the lovely Irish chap who saw Daystar will join your team. And he's very good as well because he's got his fighting spirit Apollo. As long as, as well as all of his shooting moves like Meteor Blade and whatnot. And so Daystar is a perfectly respectable addition to your team. He's, you know, kind of almost as good as Bylong. I would say in terms of stats, Bylong is better. But, yeah, like, he'd be perfectly serviceable with Sol Daystar. And he is also the canonical entry to the team if you're following by the anime. Bylong does not appear in the anime for Inazuma 11 Go Chrono Stones. He does appear in the crossover movie, but he is not part of the team in the anime. And indeed, Soul Daystar joining the team is the one that is considered the true timeline by the anime. But I don't really care because Bylong is has got the funnier inner link post, the better stats. He's the exclusive character from the previous game that I let's played in the Zoom 11 Go Light. Yes, that was kind of on purpose, but also by the same token, Go Light was the one I bought first originally, irrespective of having a preference out of Bylong and Tezcat, or especially Bylong and Sol Daystar. I'd never heard of the other guy before. I've never heard of Bylong either, had I? His fighting spirit subsided, but have we got TP for another Dragon Diver? Okay, I think I need to make some substitutions here because uh, Faye seems to be pretty much out of action already. But yes, so version differences in this game, the, there are none other than Bylong and... Uh, oh, I've hit the Mixy Max button instead of Armify, oh no! I mean, I, I guess we'll bring out Nobunaga Oda, but that's not what I was going for. Oh, you can do it back to back anyway, so fair enough. Let's go for a regular Arch Pegasus. Remember that it exists. Because still the only shot that Arian can do with uh, his armified form is running in the 90s. 
at this point in the, my first playthrough of the game, I actually bought a move manual for him to to use as a shooting move, but it just, once Harrion does get his new shooting moves, then it just became totally useless, and I kind of regretted giving it to him. Because Arian, you actually can't teach him a new move without overwriting something he's already got. Easy Breezy and uh, one, of the, one of his other moves don't actually occupy one of the main level up spaces. They are placed in as like move manual moves that you can replace. And I don't want to get rid of Easy Breezy in this game. That wouldn't feel quite right. Uh, you can armor five for us now, mate, and show us easy breezy, seeing as it's topical. Anyway, I do get sidetracked quite a bit, don't I? I love to talk about Bylong, so I've done a remarkably poor job <laughs> of doing so. But yeah, Soul Daystar, a lot of people in the comments from what I've been reading so far do prefer adult Soul Daystar, but also there's a lot of people on my Bylong squad. I mean, people knew as soon as I announced that I was Let's Playing Thunderflies. Yeah, you knew the reason why. And he will be having lines from time to time. But will I be covering Soul Daystar as well? The answer is, in some capacity, yes. Because I am also playing through Inazuma 11 Go Wildfire at the same time as playing this. Maybe as a, mainly as a backup save file for, for this save file in case a recording goes wrong and I've already saved. But... Also, it is a tradition of mine since Inazuma 11.3 that I do like to make videos covering the exclusive content from from the alternative version of the game. And that's been easy enough for this game so far, considering the first 31 episodes were identical. But uh, now that by long stroke, Soul Daystar will be having lines from time to time throughout the entire game, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to manage to cover all that, but certainly like that opening cutscene where we meet him, I'll be including for the sake of example, and I'll figure it out as I go along, but general rule of thumb is, yes, Soul Day, so we'll be getting some coverage after I've already finished the main story, or well, you never know, maybe one of my recordings will fail, and I've already saved the game, and then I have no choice but to play uh, an episode of the game on Wildfire. Heck, maybe I should do that just for the fun of it, have an episode that's on Wildfire instead of Thunderflash then what on earth would I title the video? Anyway, that's the first half of this match, and it's already 6-0, so you certainly don't need to see any more than that. Okay, after getting to, like, 12-0 in this match, suddenly we have a last bit of danger. In the 30th minute, they're taking a shot on me with utter guts in his back. Uh, no, thank you. JP, um, you had a bit of focus in the start of this episode. Can you please stop this? Thank you. I don't really understand what that segment was all about, to be honest. Like, he's he's learned to armify his fighting spirit. He's only one of four people on the team that can do that. You know, Roma can't, Gabby can't. He and, and Sam doesn't even have a fighting spirit at all. But now he's feeling like everyone's getting better and he's not good enough. Don't understand, mate. Lots of new moves, but none of them especially useful to us, I have to admit. And I'm aware that we're already like 19 or 20 minutes through the episode, so I don't think we're going to see a great deal of this, especially because we've already seen Protocol Omega 2.0 plenty of times in our life. I'm level 28? Wasn't I 26 before? So I'm already over-leveled for the next main chapter of the game, and this is going to make it even worse. But I can't just look in front of those two treasure chest rewards and not do anything about it. So let's just get... Oh, it's reset my formation. I actually changed my formation at the end of the last episode for the sake of building a more interesting one here, but never mind. I, I guess it's not interested, and we go back to how we were before. Where are we? Is this the, um... Yeah, the pitch of Nobunaga's era, that's right. The old, the Cherry Storm Stadium, to use its actual name. And already we're going to have to deal with a fighting spirit on, on the opponent. But, yeah, I don't think you really need to see any of this after the first goal. Assuming I can get the first goal nice and easy, but White Wyvern is 
so strong. It's very, very good. And 90 power on White Breath. This is the single strongest move we have available to us in the game right now. With the only exception being Flamberge on Griffin. And even then Bylong can access a spirit bonding fighting spirit as well if you get a certain character in the post game. Yeah, I'm just going to beat Protocol Omega 2.0. You've seen this team plenty enough. Let's cut back here for a second because I've actually got a great opportunity to use the standard bearer Brynhilde in a spirit duel. I'll of course be using Valkyrie's signal but they kind of respect that a defensive fighting spirit needs to do a lot of defending and it would be a shame if you just lost the ability to use your spirit after like one interaction so Valkyrie signal this might be very powerful 558 on the power it doesn't actually use up a great deal of TP to throw it out there only 35 and then Gabby can even go for goal now because I mean yeah he's a defender but he's still got the power of a fighting spirit on his side 168 that's gonna go in and Gabby gets his first goal of the series don't expect it to be a recurring thing though. And there you go, Protocol Omega 2.0 beaten by a margin of 14-0. And we've beaten Protocol Omega 3.0 as well at this point in time, so why exactly are we assembling the Ultimate Eleven again? I've forgotten the point. But anyway, that is the end of that competition route, and we finally got Killer Whale on Ade, and warp step on Bylong, because as if he wasn't good enough already, he now has a void type mega move on a dribbling <laughs> move. Like he's got Dragon Diver, a great shooting move. He's got a great fighting spirit for getting past everybody. And now he's even got warp step. You know, imagine just having oh, level five void type warp step straight away. Uh, uh, I, I don't know why there was an empty space still there, considering we've already S-ranked it. You need to S-rank this entire route for a reward of Zigzag Spark. We've already got that move on Eugene Peabody. But there is a lower route to take care of at some point, but I am already over-leveled enough as is, so I don't know when we're going to get around to those six matches. Seven even, but eventually I'm sure it will be worth it. So let's clear off this episode now by heading to Mega Moves. Mate, we've already got a Mega Move. It's called Warp Step. It's incredible, mate. No, stop in here. Um, all right. You are registered as the goal on on the map. You, yeah, you genuinely buy the Scroll of Sugar Liang for 100 prestige points. Eugene Peabody, why haven't you already done this if it's that cheap? It can't be authentic. I can't believe you're holding this in your actual hands. It has to be real. No way is that the real thing. How on earth did it end up here? Oh, how did it end up here? Let me tell you a story. Mm. Oh, hello, Faith. I guess he must have mistaken it for a move manual or something. His eyes must be failing. Well, as long as it's going to come in handy to someone, I can't complain. You're welcome to it. Faith, you're the best. Bish bash bosh. Perfect. Now we just need to install the artifact in the time machine. Hey, don't be talking about that time machine too publicly, especially in front of the likes of... Faith and the granddad. I mean, the granddad's not gonna remember. No, too cold. You must try to write on petite puma. What is there to express? I am who I am. Oh, bye, long. See, I'm. I'm gonna have to check the inner link every single time he comes up in conversation now, because he cannot write a non-funny sentence to save his life. And meanwhile, we've got Dodge appearing on the inner link. This is his first appearance in the entire game, but we know who he is, formerly a member of Ryman and now playing for um, the, the military. Lunacy, that's the one, which is which is a joke on Lunacy. Ah, oh, that's a very good emoji of goalie. Mission field? 
What mission fail? At least you came back in one piece like Goldie Man. How we do? Uh, whoops, uh, apparently there's a bit more to read. Sorry about that, lads. And this keyring conversation has been going on for like two chapters now, but... Uh, hey ho, this is the end of the episode now. In the next one, we're going to head to China, to the Three Kingdoms era, and see where Liu Bei and Chu Liang are all hanging out so that we can steal their aura. TTFN.